today we're talking about faith that brings answered prayer. So we all have all those important things that we are asking the Lord to answer us about. And today we're looking at the principles that bring answered prayer in our lives. This video is divided in three parts. The first part is going to be the principles of answered prayer. The second part is going to be looking at a specific example when someone in the Bible prayed and how God miraculously intervened and all the lessons we can get from that. Then the last part is going to be prophetic words that the Lord Jesus Christ has given me over a course of time about answered prayer and about how we can receive the answers that we seek and what we can do when we're waiting for the answer. These principles leads to answered prayer. So we're talking about the principles that will help you to build and maintain your faith as you are praying for your requests. So why is faith important? Mark eleven twenty four tells us that whatever you pray for in my name, the name of Jesus, believe that you receive them and you shall have the things that you pray for. So this video is looking at the six principles that will help you to build and maintain your faith in order to get that tangible answer from the Lord. So before we go any further, first I want us to look at the definition of faith. Hebrews 11 verse 1 tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. In other words, we can say that faith is the confidence that we will have what we are asking for from the Lord even before we see it, even before it happens. Faith is a strong persuasion or a strong expectation that God is going to do the things that we have asked him to do for us and that he is going to perform what he has promised. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 15 verse 6 when God gave Abraham the promise of a child the Bible says that and Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So Abraham believed that God was going to do what he had promised even before it actually happened, he was confident that it's going to happen. This strong persuasion that we have that God is going to do what we are asking him to do. It, 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 becomes, it becomes so powerful such that we even get to have a sense of already possessing that thing even before it actually happens. That is faith because of the confidence that we have, the assurance we have that God is going to do what he has said he would do, that God is going to give us what we have asked for. Because of that strong confidence or persuasion, it gives us a sense of possession of that thing, even before we physically possess it. And it is because of this strong persuasion that we have you know, the persuasion that God is going to do it. This persuasion gives us peace and it gives us joy. It gives us comfort in the time of waiting. So that is what faith is about. So how can we develop faith? Since faith is important in order for us to receive the promises of God, and in order for us to get answers to our prayers, how can we develop this faith? The first principle that I want to talk about is we need to know what God has promised. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we first need to hear what God has said about the situation that we're praying for, we first need to be aware of what God's promise is concerning such situations that we're facing and that we're praying for. And when we know the will of God, then we, we can be able to pray in confidence 
knowing that God is going to answer us. But if we do not know the word of God, then it is going to become extremely difficult for us to claim the promises that we do not know about. So first you need to know what God has promised you. You need to know what God has said. God has promised to heal you. God has promised to deliver you. God has promised you this and that. You need to be aware. So you need to go to the word of God. Get your Bible. You can look up verses even on the internet to say what God, you know, verses talking about God's promise on this. Then go to your Bible, study those verses in detail and take down notes, you know, because faith is something that is produced from within. So you, you feed on the word of God, you put in the word of God and it's going to produce faith. Faith is what's going to come out. But when you study the word of God, what the word of God says concerning your situation and circumstances, you need to make sure that you study the scripture and make sure you really understand it and you start to believe those promises because the more you meditate on those promises you're going to see like you're going to see how god truly feels about your situation and your circumstance and it's going to give you confidence when you pray first john chapter 5 verse 15 tells us that now the confidence that we have is if we ask anything according to his will he hears us and if we know that God hears us, then we know that we already have the petitions that we ask him for. If we know that what we are praying for is the will of God, then we know we can have the assurance that we're going to get the answers. The second way of knowing God's promises over your situation, apart from the promises that God has given you in scripture, which are, by the way, very real and powerful, if you actually believe it they are powerful and they do produce answers and i have seen that a lot in my own life the second way you get god's promises is directly a promise that god himself has spoken to you there are times when god directly gives us a promise concerning a situation god can give us a promise in a dream or god can give us a promise in a vision or God can give us a promise even through a prophetic word spoken through somebody else. Or God can give us a promise even just by speaking directly to us about a situation. But whatever way that God truly gave you a promise concerning something you're praying for, then you need to hold on to that promise because it's going to help to build your faith. You know what God's will is concerning the thing that you're praying for. The second principle that is important in getting our prayers answered is we need to study scripture that talks about the nature of God because somebody's credibility depends on their nature. How you know someone is how much you're going to trust them. If you know somebody to be a liar, you're not going to believe whatever they tell you. But if you have studied scripture, if you go to scripture, you start studying the times when God gave promises to his people in scripture and how God dealt with those promises, how God fulfilled those promises. If you look at what the word of God says about God's nature, how God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, how nothing is difficult for God. You know, all those characteristics that describe God's nature and the extent of his power, all those things become so real to you when you go in detail and, to, and begin to study scripture that talks about all these things. And you begin to meditate on all these characteristics of God and God is just going to become so real to you. You're going to know that truly he is somebody whom you can trust. That when he says something, he's not going to go back on his word. The Bible tells us in Numbers 23 verse 19, that God is not a man to lie, neither is he a son of man, that he can repent or change his mind. So you go to scripture, you, you begin to study scripture that describes God's faithfulness, that describes how compassionate he is, how loving, how willing he is to give us what we ask for. You go to scripture that is going to encourage you, 
that truly God does want to help you, you know, and all these things begin to build your faith because you know what God has promised and you know his nature that he can be trusted and it is going to begin to build your faith. So when we know his nature and we know what his will is in the situation that you're praying for, then we're going to pray with confidence because we know this is what God wants. This is what God has promised. So the next step that we make is we actually pray. You actually pray. You pray basing your request on what the will on, on the will of God that has been revealed about your situation. You know, you already know what God has said about your situation because you have read that the Bible says that ask and you shall receive. The Bible says that seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened. You know the promises God has spoken to you. And you know the promises God has spoken in his words. So you begin to pray. You actually do pray. This is a very important step. And after you start praying about your situation or when you're praying about all your requests, the next important step that will help you to build your faith is to actually write down your prayer requests you know keep something like a journal or whichever way that you're going to write down your requests this is going to be extremely important in building your faith for the future because when you when you write down your prayer requests and after some time you go back to to look at your requests you're going to realize that god has answered many of them sometimes you're going to find that god has answered all of the requests on the on the list because sometimes we pray for things and God answers and we actually forget that we had prayed for this you know it just becomes like something normal but when you have a list of prayer requests and you go back to them it's going to build your faith in the future when you come across tests and you pray for God to intervene you're going to look back at your prayer journal and you're going to see how faithful God is and it's going to help you to trust him more like I have kept prayer journals like over the years and it's really amazing now when I go back to the requests that I had given to the Lord and these requests were requests about things that were really, really serious in my life, things that were really important at this time that I was writing them. But then, I, but then when I go back to my journal, I find that God has answered. And so even when I face a test now, I can stand on the very fact that I have seen God answering me. So that is why it's so important to keep a prayer journal or to write down your prayer request somewhere because you can go and mark out, you can go and mark all the requests that God in his great faithfulness has answered you and your faith is going to be built for the future. You can look back at past victories to build your faith. The next principle that I want to talk about is you stand on the promise of God. When you're praying for whatever things that are important to you, it is inevitable that tests are going to come. You're going to be greatly tested. There's going to be time when it seems like God isn't hearing you, like you are praying, things seem to be getting worse. And you can be easily shaken if you do not have faith. You can be easily shaken and backslide and turn back and just say god doesn't answer prayer let me just leave everything but it is really important that you stand on the promise of god the promises that in the first place you identified to say this is god's will this is god's promise concerning this thing that i'm praying for because you have read what scripture says so you stand on that promise stand on that promise when Satan comes to whisper all those words that are supposed to instill fear in you, to make you to be afraid of the future, to make you to be uncertain of God's faithfulness, to make you to be uncertain of your prayer getting answered. So you defeat that fear and uncertainty by choosing to believe, you begin to meditate on the faithfulness of God you begin to meditate on what God has said, the, the promises God has spoken, and you begin to meditate 
on the nature of God that has been revealed through his word and through your past victories. So you stand firm on the promise of God and you are surely going to receive your answer. When we stand firm on the promise of God and overcome fear, we're going to have peace even in the storm. When the storm tries to overcome us, we're going to be able to stand on the promise of God. We're going to be able to still have the joy, to still have the peace, because we know that God doesn't lie, because we know that what God has said always happens, because we know what God has said about prayer. We know what God has said about our situation. We have, we have searched out what God's will is, and we know what the scripture has promised, and we know his nature. So we stand firm in our faith, even in the storm, and it's going to give us peace and joy. We, can, we are going to know that truly we can trust Jesus, that he is trustworthy, and we're surely going to receive the answers to our prayer. The next principle is obedience. It is very important for us when we're praying for something or when we're not praying for something, it is just important for us as Christians to live a life of obedience to the Lord. It is important for us to repent of our sins and to turn to Jesus Christ and begin to obey him, begin to live our lives governed by what the word of God tells us our lives should be like. Isaiah 59 verse 2, the Bible says that your iniquities have separated you from the Lord your God. It is not that God is too far away. It is not that his hand is too short. Isaiah 59 verse 1 and 2, that is what the word of God says. It's not that his hand is too short, but it is your sins that have separated you from the Lord. And it is your sins that have hidden his face. So God was, was not listening to the prayers of these people, not because he could not save them, not because he could not help them, not because he couldn't do anything, but these people had turned their backs on God and were living a life of disobedience to the Lord. They were not regarding God or regarding what God or regarding what God wants them to do or how he wants them to live. When we live in obedience to Jesus Christ, our prayers are not going to be hindered. John 15 verse 7 says that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask for anything you desire and it will be given to you. So we need to abide in Jesus. We should not let sin to separate us from God. We should not live a life of disobedience if we want to have answered prayer. Yes, some prayers could be answered out of God's goodness and mercy. But if we are really serious about our prayers getting answered, then we need to get rid of our sins and we need to make sure we're right with God. We can ask for anything we desire and God is going to give it to us. The last principle is do not stop praying persistent prayer Luke chapter 18 that is the story that Jesus Christ gives us of this woman who kept going back to this judge who was unjust and asking for justice and in the end the judge had to go against his nature and granted her justice just because of her persistence and in Luke 11 the Bible also tells us a story of a man who went to knock on his friend's door asking for bread and the friend was not willing to give him the bread but because he kept on knocking his friend had to come out and give him all the bread just be, just so that he could have peace then jesus says how much more your heavenly father it is his nature to want to give you you know even the bible tells us that if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more your heavenly father so the way that you feel when you give something to your child with god he feels that even more that joy of giving his children the things that they ask for it gives him great joy it gives him great pleasure 
so keep on praying don't stop don't say i have prayed too much don't say i have prayed and god hasn't answered but keep on praying you're going to receive if you do not stop praying you're going to receive there is this vision that the lord had given to uh, had given to a certain sister and in this vision she found herself in a room but the room was filled with boxes that were beautifully wrapped and they looked like presents you know like gifts and the whole room was full all the way to the ceiling so she was shocked like whose gifts are all these things then the lord told her that all these are the answers to prayer that were meant for my people but satan has stolen them from my people so she was surprised that how did satan steal all these answers god said satan stole the answers by making the people to stop praying by making them to abandon prayer and just give up to lose faith and just say god doesn't answer there's no point praying and when they did that satan stole the answer that they were supposed to receive because the answer had already been released from heaven and if those people had kept on praying they would have physically received the answer but satan stole it by whispering in their ears and saying it's no use praying god isn't answering just quit it just accept this situation yet all that satan wanted was to just steal the answer so keep on praying and you're going to receive so second chronicles chapter 20 uh, from verse 1 to 30 it tells us of the story of jehoshaphat three nations came up in war against judah and jehoshaphat was terribly afraid because he knew that he didn't stand a chance against three nations. So Jehoshaphat went to the Lord in prayer. He began to remind God of all the past victories that God had given to him. He reminded God of all the past victories that God had given to his people. And he also began to remind God of the promise he had made God had given a promise that when you pray in this temple, I'm going to hear. So, so he reminded God of the promise that he had made and started to call on him to fulfill that promise. And this is why it's so important for us to know the promises of God, because even our prayers are going to be with so much confidence because we know what he has promised. So he began to remind God what he had promised to say, you say that when we pray in this temple, you are going to hear. Look, now we're surrounded by three nations. And we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. So God then gave a promise of deliverance. And he said, you're not going to have to fight these enemies. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. So when God gave this promise, even before the promise manifested, Jehoshaphat and his people began to rejoice. The whole of Judah began to rejoice and they began to praise God just because of what he had promised. Because they remembered what he had done in the past. And they knew that if he has promised something new, he's still going to do it. So they began to rejoice and they began to praise God even before the promise was actually manifested. And this showed that they had faith in God. They believed in God. They behaved as though it has actually happened. Yet all they had was a promise of God's salvation. And when we read on, we find that God kept his word and turned the three nations against each other. And when the people of Judah came up in the morning, they found that their enemies had destroyed each other. And the Lord gave them the spoil of their enemies and they spent three days just gathering up the spoil by the enemy and this is a great story of deliverance of what happens when we put our faith in god and we actually pray god hears us so like jehoshaphat we need to remember the past victories we need to remember what god has done and 
when God has given a promise of his deliverance, even before the promise has been manifested, we can actually rejoice. We can sing. We can worship him because we know who he is, that he is faithful, that he can be trusted. And we are truly going to see the salvation of the Lord our God. And we're going to see the answers to our prayer. Lastly, I want to read to you some prophetic words that the Lord Jesus Christ had given to me. And these, these prophetic words were given at different times. And it's talking about answered prayer. When I was praying and it felt like God was not hearing my prayers because nothing was changing, the Lord gave my sister the following words to say to me, keep on praying, I can hear your prayers. So just because God is silent, just because it feels like you have been praying and praying and praying and nothing is happening, it doesn't mean God is not hearing you. What God actually wants from you is keep on praying and know that he is hearing you and the answer is coming, it's definitely coming. Once when I was praying for healing from high blood pressure, God had given me a promise of his healing, but the promise seemed to be slugging. The promise seemed to be taking so long to be fulfilled. And one day I was so down and the Lord God spoke to me and told me the following words. So remember these words when it feels like God's promise has delayed. He said, remember the words I have spoken to you and hold on to them in the time of trouble. When tests come, remember my promises and know that he who has promised is faithful and can be trusted. So when the storm comes, remember that he who has promised can be trusted. You can actually trust his word. You can believe him and he's truly going to do it. And lastly, the important word that the Lord God spoke to me that I want to share with you is when I was praying and the answer took long and finally God answered me and this is when I was praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the Lord God said when you pray sometimes the answer will come right there and then but there are also going to be times when the answer will take long and it is only because the Lord God is testing you he wants to see who are truly his he wants to see who will truly continue to believe him but one thing that the Lord emphasized is he said but when you pray know that the answer will always come will always come know that the answer will always come so just keep praying even the word of god tells us that everyone who asks receives it doesn't say some people it says everyone who asks receives everyone who seeks finds everyone who knocks it is open to them so god is not a liar and God is not a respecter of persons, but he respects the word he has spoken and it's surely going to be fulfilled. So begin to implement these principles and wait for your answer because it's surely coming.